Welcome to the short video on young people in Nazi Germany. As with all of our videos, please make sure that you're using your exercise books, your class notes, revision materials to help you build a bigger, clearer picture and deeper understanding of the issues involved alongside using this revision video. So, young people in Nazi Germany. Hitler had a couple of key aims. The first key aim for both boys and for girls was indoctrination, to brainwash young people into the Nazi way of life, the Nazi beliefs, whether that be at school or in Nazi youth groups. For boys and for girls, brainwashing and indoctrination was a key policy. For example, at school, boys and girls would be taught about eugenics, about the biology of breeding, the science of breeding, and they were told that if Germans and Jews had children, they would be born deformed because it wasn't a very good idea. They were told as part of being anti-Semitic about how the Jews were responsible for lots of things that had gone wrong in Germans' past in history. To help with that, textbooks were rewritten and republished and teachers had to belong to the Nazi Teachers League. In maths, trajectories were used to work out angles of, of guns, uh, ammunition and bullets were used to work out mathematical calculations. It was all designed about war, but also about math. So kind of a dual aspect to it. Lots and lots of PE lessons for boys and girls. So girls were fit to be mothers and boys were fit to fight in the German army. Lots of German lessons, lots of history lessons, lots of things to build that traditional viewpoint of which obviously the Nazis were trying to sell. So lots of things in school, both boys and girls. Girls would also be taught about needlework and childcare and boys would do more PE and fitness in preparation for the ultimate aim of joining the army. Outside of school, there's also different youth groups. Boys and girls could join Hitler youth groups. And both of these groups were very attractive to the young people at the time. The boys were attracted by a number of features of the Hitler youth. They would be given a free uniform, a sense of belonging. They would be, give, be able to have the opportunity to go on camps, weekends away, lots of things outdoors. There would be lots of fitness things, drills, boxing, uh, music, parades. It was all seen as being a very, very exciting and new thing for boys to do. In the pictures, the propaganda posters, we've got blonde hair, blue eyes, we've got the swastikas everywhere. So lots and lots of various things trying to encourage boys to join the Hitler Youth. For the girls, we've got equally lots and lots of similar features. We've got blonde hair, blue eyes, we've got smiling, we've got the uniform, we've got the Nazi flag in the background. So we've got lots of propaganda techniques to encourage young people to join both groups. There are different groups, two for the boys and two for the girls. Again, attracted by the option of doing different activities, the uniforms, the belonging, it was seen as very, very exciting. So that leads us to look at one question, and that is how effective were the Nazi policies towards the youth? Well, again, we've got our two hands. On one hand, they were effective because by 1938, 8 million children had joined the Hitler Youth. On the other hand, they're not that effective because 1 million children had not joined the Hitler Youth. There are members of other groups like the Edelweiss Pirates, like the Roving Dudes, who would go around spraying anti-Nazi graffiti on walls. They beat up some junior SS leaders, some, some Hitler Youth leaders. So not everyone bought into and believed the Nazi policies towards young people. So overall, in judgment, were they effective? Well, at the beginning, yes, because lots of people joined the Hitler Youth very quickly. However, both boys and girls, some of them came to resent it by the end. They didn't like the sense of oppression, didn't like the control, the level of intensity, because women, the girls, were being groomed to be mothers. They were being groomed, they were being prepared for motherhood, for childcare, for cooking. The boys, were being prepared for war. Lots of the things they did had a war uh, aspect to them. So two different things there. We've got, firstly, the aim for boys and girls of indoctrination, of brainwashing into Nazi beliefs, for example, anti-Semitism. We've also got 
slightly different names. The girls to be mothers, housewives, and the boys to, prepare, to be prepared for war. So overall, in conclusion, were they effective? On one hand, yes. On one hand, no.